Hello, so welcome to another video on, on, on G prompts. So today we want to see how we can solve simple ordinary differential equations in G prompts. Okay, so let's assume we have these equations. So we have dy dt equals minus y plus one. And you have the initial condition as at y at t equals zero, y is equal to zero. Then how can you, how can you solve this in G prompts? So we have we try to solve some of these equations. Um, to do this, let's assume you want to solve this in, in MATLAB or in Python. You will write this as a function. You write the function for this equation, and then you pass that function as an argument to a solver. Let's say ODE int, for example. Then you specify the initial condition and then the duration, the line, the, the time span that you want to run. Um, the simulation for. But in G, so in G prompts, it's much easier. So all you need is one line equation in the model. So you write this equation in the model, and then in the process, you specify the initial condition under the initial section, and then you run it. So just one line in the model, one line in the process, then you run. Okay, let's see how we can do this. First thing is to create uh, the new project. So file name. So there's a new project. You can save your project by clicking File, Save As. Then you specify the location that you want to save. Let's say in the desktop, and I'll call it, let's say, um, test uh, G prompts. Then save. Now I have that saved then. So you can see the name has changed. So I want to run this. In that model, I have one variable, y. So I need to create a variable type. So I will just call it no type. So I don't care much about what y is. So then I can change the, the default up and lower bound. So I can make this bigger. So let's say I put 10,000. So I can leave the lower bound at zero. Hopefully the, the y would be negative. Or I can make it minus 100 for it some reasons. Okay, then I have that variable type. Then I go to the model, um, let's say question one, I'll call it key one. So it is the first question there? Then under the G prompts model. So I don't have any parameter, I have just variable and equation. So I'll delete everything else. So variable, so variable Y as, I'll just call it no type. So if we want auto completion, if you click on Control Spacebar, it's going to com complete that for you. So if you have more than one variable type that start with n, it's will list all the all the variable types, and you can then select what you want. You can also do the same thing for variables and parameters in the in the code. Then equation. So the equation I want to write is dy dt equals minus y plus t. In G prompts, all variables, parameters, they all have intrinsic temporary, uh, uh, time dependence. They all have intrinsic time dependence. So which means everything depends on time, okay? So um, even if, it's a, if it doesn't change, it will just be a flat line when you visualize it. Uh, so to write dy dt in G prompts, like time derivative basically, to, do, to write time derivative in G prompts, which is basically d, dt, you use dollar sign. So if I want to do dy dt, I will do dollar sign y. If I want to do dt dt, I will do dollar sign t. So the dollar sign symbol represents this d dt, okay, in G prompts. Now, what do I do? So all I need to do is dollar sign dollar sign y equals minus y plus one. So after every equation, you put a semicolon in G prompts. Okay, that's all you need to do here. Then you can save it. Then if you have errors, the error will show here. So let's, if I miss anything, you have the errors there, then you fix the error. Then if I go to the process, uh, new entity, right here, solve, Question one, that's the name of the process. Then all I don't have, all I need is, so I need schedule 
I will need the schedule, how long I want to run for, and I will need um I need unit first. Units. So I'll just say um if I claim problem, I'll just call it problem as so the name of the model is Q1. So I'll just say Q1. Q1. Okay. So after units, I need initials because I don't need anything else. I need just to specify the initial condition. So what's the initial condition? At time t equals zero, y equals zero. So all I need to do, initial condition are the equation. So I will just do, but it, I don't have access. I don't have direct access to y in this um, process. So this is very important. So to have access to the y variable, remember the variable that I declared y is here in the model. So I cannot just say y equals uh, um, y equals zero, I will get an error. So it's saying y is not declared. So because I don't have direct access to y here. So what do I do? I need to connect to this model. I need to find a way to go inside this model and grab this y from there. So how do I do that? All I need is to, to just define or create a path for that y, var y variable. So this is the name of the model here so i need to use that name so and then go inside that model and grab this y from there so how do i do that the problem dot y so once i do problem dot i can say pop up y so the problem dot y means go inside this problem grab this variable y okay so once we do that save that error is gone so this initialization procedure don't worry if i put schedule after it it should fix it. Always, this is something that GPROMs do by default. So don't worry about that one. Then if you place the schedule there, it should solve it. Yes. Okay. Then schedule how long do I want to run for? Let's say continue for let's say 10. Now to run it, all you need to do is to click on you can click on this uh, green arrow. So this green arrow. So, or you press F5, okay? So if you click on that, it's going to pop up this dialog box that asks you to do some settings. So delete unsafe, unsafe cases. For example, let's say you've run the, I have some cases of the solution file here. If you want, if you don't, if you don't need them, maybe they, they are errors, we check that. It's going to delete the, the already created ones, and then you have only the new one here. So that's, one thing then include result trajectory in case yeah you need you need to always check that then send result to project to send results trajectory to jeremy so jeremy is a plotting tool in gproms that's where you can customize the graph the plots but that will be for a new video so i'm, I'm not going to check that i'm going to use the the uh, built-in uh, graph in in the mod in the model builder so all I need to do, run, click OK. Then there's also uh, reporting interval. I did not remember to uh, show that. So I, we can do, I can run again. So if I click that, then if I click on delete on save cases, it's going to delete that. So the reporting interval is like, after how many points do I want to grab the result? So after how many seconds? So remember I'm running for 10. If I leave the reporting interval as 10, so that means I'll have just one point, right? So let's see what happens. If I leave it as 10, and if you want to view the result, you click on this, this uh, folder and go to click on results. So this arrow, you click on it and expand that as well. Problem, variable. So the only variable I have is Y. If you click on that, so it just gives me the value at zero and the value at 10. So I just duplicated this for any reason. So I have just one point, one solution. Why? Because I'm reporting the solution only after 10 seconds and I'm running for 10 seconds. So the, all do I need to do is to have more points. I can rerun it and then specify a slower reporting interval. So I can, if I put one here, I should have 10 points. One, so it's going to report these, the results after one second, two seconds, three seconds. So the interval, is one so that means going to skip it's going to be after one one seconds 
So now I have the solution. Expand that. The result trajectory problem the variable star. Then I have ten points. So this is the table format. So if you want to view it in form of a graph, you click on graph. So that shows the the plots for you. So that's the um the profile of the variable y. Okay. So that's how to run very simple uh, problem in, in GPROMS. Let's see if you can run one more example. So I can create multiple models here. So if I close this. So the second example, uh, if I say I can also copy this, I can click on right, uh, right click, copy, then click on model, right click, paste. So I have the, the copied is a copied one. I can then rename it, right click, uh, rename, I'll just call it Q2, that's the second question. Then I have that. So the model that I want, the equation is um, dy dt equals five minus y. So what dy dt equals five minus y. So I'll just change that to five minus y. And the second equation, there are two here. I uh, also have dx dt, so dollar sign x this time equals four exponential minus t. Okay. Now I need to declare the variable x as, I want to use note type again. Now there is an issue here. t, the equation, this is the equation I'm trying to solve. I have two, equ two differential equations, dy dt, equals five minus y, and I have the initial condition as zero. I also have dx dt as four exponential um, minus uh, t, and x zero equals zero. Now, uh, to solve this, this is what I'm trying to solve. So this equation is for that. Now this equation is for that, four exponential minus t. So, but t, this variable t is time. The simulation time in G prompt, I cannot use this t directly in the model. That's one thing you need to uh, learn in G prompts. You don't have access, you don't have direct access to t in the model. So I can't just use t there. So what do I need to do? I need to define a new variable and then call it the time that I want to call it. So. If I declare a new variable t as, so to distinguish that from, I can just call it, let's say tempo, a new variable type, you can call it whatever you want. Then create a new variable type, new entity, tempo. And this is what we monitor the simulation time. So right, edit and specify the, the upper bound as let's say one e to the power of four, then, what do I need to do? All I need to do now is to, now I can use this T directly because I already specified, I already declared that, that T as a variable. Now, all I need to do now in the process, then set the value of T to the simulation time in GPROMS. And that's it. So if I go to here yeah, and create, and I can copy it again, or I can create new entity if I want. New entity, solve you. Q2, then um, if I delete all these ones that I don't need, then I need to, and unit, I call it problem pass. This time is Q2. Then, because I have differential equation, then I need to, now if you look at this, I have how many equations? I have two equations and three variables. So because I have three variables, two equations, my degrees of freedom is not zero because you need the degrees of freedom to be zero. So I need to make an assignment here. I need to specify the value for T. So I need to do that on the assign. Remember you do, you, ask, you specify uh, values for variable in order to cancel the degree of freedom, in order to make degrees of freedom zero on the assign. So here, all I need to do is go to assign. I need assign because I have more variables and equation in this case. So I will do problem. Remember, I cannot do T directly. I need to grab it from the model. So T 
Now, assignment in GPROMS. This is how you do assignment. Colon equals. So what have I done here? What I've done here is to say that um, this, this symbol is for assignment. This is used for equation. There's even between equation and assignment. So assignment, you are assigning the, this value to this variable. Equation, you are saying the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So in GPROMS, assignment is done using this. For you do that for very for parameters to set parameters to assign um, degrees of freedom for variables. But initial conditions you use equ equality sign because they are equations. Take note of that. Initial conditions are equations, but assignment you do it using this colon equals symbol. Okay. So if I clear this, um, then it has assigned. I have, what I've done is to say okay, the time I had in my model. I've set it to the simulation time in GPROMS. So this is what monitors the simulation time. Then the next thing to do is this set my initial condition. So initial, what do I need? Problem dot uh, x. I need to set an initial condition for x equals zero. I also need to do problem dot y equals zero. Okay, so that's it. Initial condition for x, initial condition for y. This is equation, this is my differential equation for y, differential equation for x. And I already specified my, my time. That's all I need to do. Then, present procedure, how do I want to run it? That's done under schedule. I do. I do. Then, continue for. So let's say I want to run for 20 seconds. So if I run it now, so remember to run it, you click on that. Then I can, if I want, I can specify or can give it a name, the name for the solution uh, case file. So I can say result. Then reporting interval, you can change it if you want. And then I can run it. Okay, so you run. So this is the results now. Results. We open that problem variable. So T, this is my time. This is X and this is Y. So you click on X. So this is X and click on Y. You can view Y. This is Y. Okay. X, Y. So if you look at both, basically, um, that is the profile. Okay. So we'll keep it there and I will see you in the next video. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.